And in fact, we look at the utilization as a vertically integrated company. We, we look at our, our media facilities for the disks. We look at our wafer facilities for heads. And those facilities, as we look forward, are going to be as busy or busier than they've ever been. I mean, the amount of data is, is um, relative to the density as, as well as disks and heads and how many you can employ. So, I mean, we, we see this as, you know, in terms of fundamental technology and component construction manufacturing, busier than it's ever been. Right. We'll make fewer units. I mean, there'll be fewer units as they become bigger and denser for this application space, but the fundamental consumption of magnetic recording technology and components is all-time records. Right. I think we, we've plotted a course now that I think was relatively uncertain for the hard drive industry in the data center and plotted a course that I think we can, we can speak clearly to the market and clearly to customers about uh, the value proposition for rotating magnetic storage for decades to come. This MAMR um, adventure feels like the early days of PMR, um, perpendicular, the current recording uh, technology. It feels like we understand a certain amount of distance ahead of us, and that's about this four terabit per, per inch uh, kind of uh, distance. But it feels like the early days where we could only see so far, but the road actually goes much further, and we're going to find more and more ways to extend this technology and keep that order of magnitude cost advantage going from a hard drive standpoint versus um, versus flash. Right. I would say that Hammer has certainly received the most press as far as trying to assert it as the, the extending recording technology for, for enterprise HDDs. It's already happening, it's already shipping, but uh, there are always uh, challenges that uh, would like to make this even more robust. Uh, 20 years ago, we had a few hundreds of megabytes per square inch. Okay, and now we went to Terra, which is a hundred times more. We're talking about now, we have demonstrated one or two terabytes per square inch. Uh, that's already uh, in the market. And we are aiming now one order higher, 10 terabytes per square inch. So we're working on the Hammer technology, which stands for Heat Assisted Magnetic Recording. So the new generation of uh, hard disk drives, uh, in order to be able to store more information and therefore have a higher uh, storage capacity, we are aiming to 10 terabits per square inch of area, uh, requires that uh, we have a very small magnetic domains in the magnetic medium that uh, is deposited on the hard disk and on top of that a protective carbon overcoat to protect it from corrosion or wear if the head touches to that. Uh, as the uh, science has advanced to the point that we can make these uh, magnetic domains, uh, the so-called bits, into the magnetic layer of this hard disk smaller and smaller, uh, we have uh, come across uh, to a physical limit known as the super paramagnetic limit. These uh, tiny magnetic domains can no longer remain stable as they're magnetized with their north or south poles upwards, uh, representing zeros and ones because the information is stored in the binary form with zeros and ones. So these small magnetic domains tend to flip and that has necessitated to be to the technology to change them from a soft magnet which was easy for the magnetic head to flip and uh, therefore polarize it differently every time that information needed to be written or erased to be made out of the so-called hard magnet. A hard magnet is a material that uh, is stable because it requires a high uh, intensity magnetic field in order to be changed. And that magnetic field is not available by its neighboring small magnetic domains. It's not also available by the magnetic head that now cannot erase information and polarize again those magnetic bits. So here is where the term heat comes in and is related to the fact that a laser beam now is integrated with the magnetic head. 
and its purpose is to locally and instantaneously hit uh, the magnetic domain, the bit, uh, lowering its coercivity, that is its magnetic strength, so that the magnetic head with its magnetic field can at the same time polarize it. And as the laser moves over, the uh, bit immediately uh, cools down to room temperature and locks the new polarization and returns to its high coercivity, strong, strong magnetic. So that obviously poses a lot of uh, more stringent requirements to the protective overcoat that now has to sustain these heat pulses uh, that is uh, receiving from the head whenever information is needed to be uh, locally retrieved, or recorded or uh, rewritten. So our work is to make these films not only thin and hard and smooth, but also thermally stable. So we're studying uh, with some advanced microscopy, cross-section microscopy methods, uh, how this uh, structure of these films retains its diamond-like uh, character uh, when it's heated and it's not becoming graphitic because that would uh, be uh, catastrophic for the protection of the head and also the disc where they're both coated with this thin diamond-like carbon overcoat. It is nanotechnology because the uh, protective overcoat, the diamond-like film that we're talking about, that we are synthesizing, is about one or two nanometers. Uh, so that's about one millionth of the diameter of, a, of the human hair. So you can understand the big challenges that uh, are behind it, uh, making those, to, and because of the uh, nanometer size that uh, they have. We have to use nanotechnology derived uh, instruments like nanoprobes that we can poke these films and, and try to understand their mechanical properties without uh, getting the uh, effect of the substrate. But when I started working in this field, the protective overcoat was half a micro, that is 500 nanometers. And now we're talking about one or two nanometers. So you can understand that we have two orders of magnitude decrease in the size of this overcoat. Uh, that happened over two decades, two and a half decades. Uh, it, it didn't happen uh, immediately from 500 nanometers to two. It gradually came down. And the motivation behind was uh, to bring the magnetic uh, transducer on the head as close as possible to the magnetic layer on the hard disk. Obviously, because the magnetic domains were getting smaller uh, since the densities that we were aiming for were increasing. And having this uh, magnetic domain smaller required a more focused magnetic field. So you need to have the transducer on the magnetic head as close as possible if ideally, uh, theoretically, I would say, in contact with the magnetic layer in order to uh, uh, individually polarize those uh, magnetic domains. So this resulted in reducing both the flying height of the head and also the thickness of the overcoat as they're both contributing to that distance that is an obstacle to focus and enhance the magnetic field because it changes exponentially with the distance. Uh, uh, so the intensity of this field we want to be as high as possible so that we can magnetize hard magnetic domains in the magnetic layer and also as close as possible to the magnetic head so that we can focus on a single bit. We don't want to polarize several bits at the same time. But here we're actually showcasing the hammer technology. So in 2019, Hammer being in heat-assisted magnetic recording, this is what's going. This technology is what's going to uh, enable us to break the 20 terabyte capacity point. So it's going to be a mix of uh, plenty of things. Where you can have a, a multiple platters, or more platters as well as more actuators too, as well to keep up with uh, reading the performance, uh, reading the drive itself on, on the platter. Yes.